Hey there, in this video we are going to look at how we actually solve proportions. So we've talked about what a proportion is, how it is a ratio equal to a ratio. So a fraction often equal to another fraction. That's typically how we see it written. So that is a proportion and that's what we're going to go ahead and talk about how we solve. So to solve a proportion for an unknown value, we are going to use the cross products we briefly talked about in our previous lesson. So remember that a cross product is when we uh, multiply the diagonals. So if I have A over B equals C over D, remember that the cross product is A times D and one other cross product is B times C. It doesn't matter which one you do first, but it will always be this bottom left times the top right and the top left times the bottom right. So let's go ahead and jump into some examples. So we're going to solve for x in each example. So I like to go ahead and highlight or circle your two cross products. And um, I typically do the one if there's only one with an x, one with a variable. I usually do that one first. So 5 times x is 5x. And then you'll put an equal sign. And then 2 times 10, so 2 times 10 is 20. So you'll do your cross product equal to your other cross product. It doesn't matter if you had flipped it around and done 20 equals 5x. I just typically like my variable on the left side, so that's why I usually do that diagonal first. So then we just solve that equation that is created. So we divide both sides by 5 here. When we divide 5x divided by 5, the 5 divided by 5 is just 1. It cancels out, and we get x equals 4. And so that would be your answer on this one. If you want to check yourself, you could plug in 2 over 5 equals and plug in 4 for x, so 4 over 10. And you can either uh, use either method we talked about in our previous lesson. So either cross product equal to cross product, and you'll see you'll get 20 equals 20. And yes, that does work. Or you can simplify 2 fifths is simplified all the way. 4 tenths simplified would be 2 fifths, so they would be equivalent. So that was just a quick review of um, checking. You don't have to do that necessarily if it doesn't say, but that can be um, helpful if you want to double check yourself. So um, let's look at number two. We have one half equals two x minus five over three. Notice that in this one, we do not have just a single x. It is two x minus five, an entire expression with x instead this time. So we are still going to do the same thing. One times three as one cross product and two times two x minus five as the other. I'm going to go ahead and do two times two x minus five. I am going to set it up a little bit different than the last one in the sense that I'm not just going to multiply that in my head like I did with 5 and x because it is an expression. With the expression, we are going to have to eventually distribute that 2 in front to the 2x and to the negative 5. So that is one cross product, and then that's going to be equal to the other cross product, 1 times 3, which is just 3. So I go ahead and distribute 2 times 2x and 2 times negative 5. That gives me 4x minus 10 equals 3. At that point, we go ahead and add 10 to both sides. When we do that, we get 4x equals 13. And then now we want to go ahead and get x by itself. So we divide by 4 on both sides. And that gives us x equals 13 over 4. All right, so that is our final answer. If we were to write it as a decimal, um, 13 over 4, you could use long division and think through it that way or, or try to use one of those uh, methods. Or um, I like to think with fourths if you think um, money. So for example, 13 divided by 4. Um, if you think about if you have 13 quarters, or 13 fourths, um, 13 quarters, 12 of those are going to evenly divide into 4. And then I have one remaining fourth. So 12 fourths is going to be 3. 1 fourth as a decimal is 0.25. So if you think quarters, if I have 13 quarters, I have three dollars and 25 cents um, but that just depends if the problem asks for it as a fraction as a decimal or if it doesn't clarify so 13 fourths or three dollars and 25 cents or just in in this problem 3.25 but sometimes when it's in fourths money can be helpful to think in terms of quarters if you're more comfortable with that 
All right, and then on number three, we have 5x plus 1 over 6 equals 3x minus 2 over 3. Again, we have two ratios set equal, two fractions set equal, so we're going to cross multiply. So it doesn't matter in this one. Um, it always doesn't matter, but especially in this one, which diagonally do first because they both have x in them. Um, so each cross product has um, x, so it doesn't matter which one to start with. I'm going to go ahead and do 6 times 3x minus 2 equals 3 times 5x plus 1. Again, they're expressions with x, not just an x in each of these numerators, so um, I do go ahead and uh, write it out before I try to do that distributing. And then I'm going to distribute the 6 and the 3. So 6 times 3x is 18x. 6 times negative 2 is negative 12 equals 3 times 5x is 15x, 3 times 1 is 3. At that point, we're going to subtract 15x. There are many ways, uh, many routes you can go with this, but I like to go ahead and get the variables together by themselves on one side um, by moving the variables together first. So 18x minus 15x is 3x, then I still have minus 12 equals 3. And then I would go ahead and add 12 to both sides. And that would give me 3x equals 15. And then at that point, we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by 3 to get x by itself. And so we get x equals 5 as our answer here. So the next thing we're going to look at is how we actually can apply that in what we call a directly proportional problem. So we now are going to... Um, be given four values or three of four values typically. And usually we refer to them as x1, x2, y1, and y2. So there's two x values and two y values. And we are told that they are directly proportional. That means that they have a relationship described by any of these four proportions that are set up here. So we see x1 and y1 over each other, where here we have x2 and y2. We see here um, the other way around. So that's that second one is this, just the reverse. So switching the top and the bottom here and the top and the bottom there. Then that gives you the second formula. Notice on both of those, we're still multiplying the same um, cross products. So x1 and y2 here, and that's also x1 and y2 here. And then we see y1 and x2 and y1 and x2. So we have uh, the same set up essentially um, because we have the same cross products. Same thing with these other two examples. This time we have the x's over each other and the y's over each other. Um, and that's just going to be again x1 and y2 being multiplied together. And then um, the other cross products is y1 and x2. And then here we've got x1 and y2 and we have x2 and y1. All right, so those are our cross products, and um, these are all really the same cross products, so that's why they're all going to be able to be used. Um, however you prefer to set it up is fine, but all four of those will work because they are all multiplying the same uh, cross products. So um, I, when I do it, I typically will use this first one, the x1 over y1 and the x2 over y2, but again, you can use any of these four. So any of the four can be used um, to solve the directly proportional relationship problems. Notice that those cross products, like we said, are the same even through the placement of x1, x2, y1, and y2 in different places. So let's go ahead and look at this first example. I'm going to copy down the uh, formula version that I prefer or that I use just out of habit. But again, you can use any of the four. So let's go ahead and set this up. So they tell us in this problem, the ratios are directly proportional. Find the missing variable, which in this case you can see in your next line, what is the value of x1? So that's gonna be the unknown here, but they do tell us y1, x2, and y2. So we can go ahead and plug that in. So first things first, we don't know x1 y1 is going to be 15, so that's going to go right here. x2 is going to be our next one, which is 4. And then y2 is our bottom number, which is 5. 
So we're going to go ahead and cross multiply. X1 and 5 get multiplied together, and then 15 times 4 get multiplied together. So 5 times x1 is just going to be 5 and then x1 equals, and then our other cross product, 15 times 4. So 15 times 4 is 60. If you need a quick reminder, you could do um, 15 times 2 times 2, because 2 times 2 is 4. And what I mean by that is 15 times 2 is 30, and then you multiply that by 2 and you get 60. So if it helps you to kind of break down those numbers um, to get that, uh, since you will always have a calculator, for example, on the test, then, uh, then that is helpful. So let's go ahead and solve that. So 5x1 equals 60. We divide both sides by 5. And we get x1 equals 60 divided by 5 is 12. So our answer on this one is 12. So in summary, we have solving proportions where we cross multiply and then solve for the variables. So again, if we've got A over B equals C over D, then that just means we are multiplying these two together and we are multiplying these two together and we set them equal. So it's always one cross product equal to the other cross product. Um, additionally, we talked about directly proportional examples and remember all four of these work. Once you pick one, you plug in the numbers you know. We didn't know x1 on the one we just did, so we plugged in this, we plugged in this, we plugged in this, and then we went ahead and we cross-multiplied. Once we cross-multiply, then we went ahead and solved for that unknown variable. So really the same process in both of these. It's just in the directly proportional examples. You have to set up the proportion. It's not typically already set up for you. So hopefully that helps with your understanding of proportions and how they connect to just solving basic linear equations.